Demon basketball coach Mike McConathy, whose team is perhaps rounding the corner and uh, certainly is headed to Lake Charles on Saturday to play McNeese. Coach, uh, your team in its last game played uh, the undefeated in conference Islanders of Corpus Christi, and it was not the mismatch that records indicated. What was uh, the difference in your team, not only in that game, but also in last Saturday's game at Lamar, in which uh, two games in a row you've been on the cusp of victory? Maybe playing with more purpose. You know, everybody understand that it's just not going to get done. You can't assume it's something. It's a real lesson in life because in life people just assume things are going to happen, and you got to compete. And you know, I mean, they're just they're, they just came and they competed and they played Saturday and they competed again on uh, the last night against Corpus. And um, you know, we looked like we were down, we we're out. We came back, ended up cutting it to four. Had a couple inopportune plays that took place for us where we didn't take care of the ball and uh, defensively didn't make some stops to, and to allow them to get back and then we fouled and they made all their free throws where they had missed a few free throws and allowed us to get back into the door or open the door a little bit so we could get back in the game. So, you know, just I think passion, purpose um, is a little bit different. Maybe, you know, it's kind of like uh, sometimes you just get sick and tired of being sick and tired and that's what I see we're doing now. The close games are tough for a team that's lost its antidote, its, its senior point guard. And now you've been in two at the end that didn't finish well for you. But Ken Ventura used to say this about first time winners on a golf tour, when they're on number 15, you'd never won before, you didn't know how to do it, you need to lose one before you win one. Is that fairly well true in this sport? Well, you know, that's interesting. I didn't know who had said that, but that's always my thought that sometimes, you know, a victory doesn't really get you as far as you need to go. Whereas if you lose and you're not successful, but you almost get there, then it puts you in a position to worry the, the, the there'll be more things that will happen on down the road for you. People look at the record and the sky is falling. But you're watching the team, you were just in a team meeting things are pointed in a positive direction. Aren't yeah, they? I mean, the kids are disheartened, we're disheartened, but I'm a, so much further improved and they're further improved than they were two weeks ago. Because two weeks ago, if we'd been playing this hard, we would be, for, we would we'd have already would have gotten wins and be headed with some momentum. But sometimes, you know, it goes back to something that I believe you sent to me. They're allowing us to coach us now, coach them now. And you know they're realizing, hey, maybe these guys know a little bit about what they're talking about. That's not being disrespectful on their part. It's the nature of the world that we live in, that everybody has all the answers, and this, that, and the other. And sometimes they we're we're a little bit um, reluctant listeners, or are open to constructive criticism. So, what have you learned that? that uh works with this group so far uh, what 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 is it that that will get them continuing to move forward I think more individualized attention and you say what do you mean individualized attention well we've, we've changed our complete practice scope our the model is completely changed we're spending 20 minutes of video with me watching video and boy that's a, that's a tough one there 20 minutes of one coach with one player and 20 minutes either in the weight room or 20 minutes on shots and just individualized work because if we don't teach them, th continue teaching them and we just take this whole approach of we're just going to do it as a team, well the parts aren't getting any better, how's the team going to get better? And we, we found that that's really helped us we think a lot this last week. Maybe the biggest single leap forward against Corpus Christi was Ishmael Lane not only because he put up 18 points and had 11 rebounds, those were indicative of him, I think, being more aggressive, more assertive, and his teammates really working hard to get him the ball inside. Well, I mean, it's nice when you got a big figure that gets really big with their hands and gets them up and makes them a nice target. And he, for the most part, will catch the ball when it comes in there. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with through the rest of this year. And uh, we just got to, one of the things that we talked about this week of trying to get the ball into our post guys in transition rather than getting set. 
and there was eight times last night that we were entered the ball into the post in transition with the change of side of the floor coming up the floor that we were able to get it inside and good things happen. All right, speaking of post, Colby Kuntz has been on the shelf all season long with the concussion and related issues. What's his status uh, at this point? Uh, has has an appointment with a neurologist this week, um, and you know, then we'll just go from there. It's been pretty frustrating for us. Imagine how frustrating it is for him. You know, you say this about kids, because all kids, you want them to all be good kids. But you know, being realistic, some people aren't just good people. He's great, a great young man, great student, just a awesome individual, and that's what pains you even more because he wants to do what coaches tell him. He wants to be the guy just go get rebounds. He wants the guy take what it gives me. Uh, he would have made Ish a lot better because he would battle Ish with his big old body. And uh, you know we're going to keep plugging along and know that he's got a great future. And you know um, got a, we talked to, I gave him a little surprise today about a potential game in Oklahoma next year. And he had a big, big, big smile on his face to play the second game of the year at o, OU and his home ground where his mother and dad both went to school. Be a pretty neat, neat, neat uh, thing if it comes through. Is there a line in the sand this year where you say it's just too late? We got a red shirt. Uh, you know the problem with it is if he'd been working out all along, then you'd have to make that decision. Uh, we'll still discuss and confer with him, and if they, he gets back, you know we'll see where we go from there. A young man that's going to be a, a doctor one day probably doesn't need five years of, school, of undergraduate school, but uh, he'll be in school a long time. But that's something that you know we'll discuss and and see where it takes us. All right, uh, let's talk about Zeke Woodley and how he's having to fight opposing defenses. You know, I mean, he he you know thank goodness for Ish because Ish is if Ish can continue to progress, it's taking a little bit of heat off of him to wearing relax. He got up. 18 shots last night, which is the most shots he's had. He only had eight the previous game and only had 11 the other game. So I was proud of him for getting those up. And one of those is, is a direct, um, comes from directly what we've been doing in those workouts, catching and being ready to shoot. And he was a little long on his shot yesterday and a lot, I mean, all perfect looking shots, just wanting it a little bit too much. You know, and maybe he was a little bit shocked he was open because he had some open looks. But it's been a it's been a tug of war. You know, it, it really has been a tug of war. It looks like it's just a wrestling match for him, and he's just got to keep battling. You know, keep fighting, and and he'll be fine. All right, let's turn our attention to McNeese and Saturday afternoon down in Burton Coliseum. Obviously, a, a team that you have respect for, a program you have great respect for, with uh, Dave Simmons, your former assistant, your dear friend, as the head coach. Uh, Dave does a wonderful job. Dave just finds out a way to make things work and happen. Um, you know, he's you know they Ray got a big win against Sam Houston last Saturday uh, at home, uh, knocking Sam Houston out of the undefeated ranks in the conference, um, which that West portion has had a nice run. They've been very successful, but he was able to get them at home and and did a really good job. And uh, you know they went on the road against Abilene and, and didn't fare as well, but. It's a tough trip. Uh, we've we've been on that trip, and um, but I mean he'll have his guys ready, and uh, the key factor for them is shooting the ball well. If they shoot the ball well, and they'll just take you and go make basketball plays and dump it into McFerrin every now and then and make some things happen. But they're going to be tough-minded and they're going to compete, and you know it's going to it's going to be a war. Your team's a third of the way through the conference schedule, 12 conference games left. What can happen over these next dozen games? You know, you, you win one, you never know what might happen. I mean, you know, I mean, this team could, could turn it, get it on a roll. If you go back and look at the last couple of years, we were one and four. Uh, last year, I think we were two. Uh, we came, started off uh, one and three, maybe, uh, somewhere around there, and ended up 13 and five the year before that. You know, we had a, had a, had a decent record, ended up in tied, for, um, tied for second, ended up getting the um, third, three seed. Uh, last year had the three seed again. So, you know, there's a lot of things that could happen. It's just a matter of, of continuing to get better and improve. And, you know, you, you know, it, it's easy to want to write somebody off. A great crowd last night, I thought, um, considering everything, Tuesday night, high school basketball night, uh, in a 
small population town creates problems for us, but we had a good crowd here, uh, energetic crowd. I thought the student support was good, and uh, they were all wanting us to make sure we scored enough points where they could get to Kane's Challenge, I know. But uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll take that. We'll just want them here. You want to score points, too? That's right. Did you go to Kane's afterwards? I haven't, but I do have tickets in my pocket. I'll be glad to share those with y'all. Well, I know that you're a Kane's aholic, so. Uh... Yeah, Kelly does a great job there in uh, in the activists at our local Canes, and we appreciate them. We appreciate you.